I'm the animated heroine. Recently I decided to start doing video reviews. And I decided specifically to do them only on animated films. One, because I really love animation. And two, because I went to school for illustration and really appreciate what goes into concept art and the final product. Now generally when you have film critics, real critics, they have a bunch of movies that they go to see every year. And since I've decided to focus only on animation, there's maybe at the most about 16. And that's really stretching it to include everything I read up about. I mean, some of these movies are in pre-production and may never see theaters until like 2013. So I decided that since there will be months at a time where nothing is coming out, I may try to do some other videos. And that's where this video comes in. This is a segment that I'm calling Real vs. Real. It's going to be where I take two films that have something very specific in common and compare them. It may be that they have the same writer or director. It may be that they are from the same production company. Maybe they're based on the same story or they have the same type of story or similar characters. Or, as is the case in today, maybe one is blatantly ripping off the other. Yeah, everyone knows about Disney and DreamWorks. They're the two biggest animation studios in America, and a lot of people know that their feud goes beyond regular competition. It's personal. Still, this segment isn't about that. This is about the films. Now, I know a lot of people have made this comparison before, and I tried to stay away from other reviews so it wouldn't change my opinion. But I did see both of these films as a kid, so it's fair to say that I'm already a little bit biased. Now, what I did do was look into the history of the films. If Wikipedia is to be believed, A Bug's Life was in production before Ants. I know, shocking. I can't promise this information is correct, but apparently John Lasseter pitched the idea for A Bug's Life the day Katzenberg, one of the three founders of DreamWorks, left the Disney company. Although Katzenberg, of course, claims otherwise. At one point, DreamWorks offered to stop production on Ants if Pixar agreed to move the release of A Bug's Life to a different date, because otherwise it was going head-to-head -head with the Prince of Egypt. Pixar refused, and DreamWorks released Ants a month before the film that it was claimed to be ripping off. So, what exactly do these films have in common? Main character who is sort of a social outcast, who thinks differently from everyone else, and who happens to be an ant. Check. Both characters fall in love with a princess. Check. Both films carry an underlying message about small people standing up to oppression. Check. That's pretty much where the similarities end, unless you want to nitpick. But rather go than going right into differences and the admittedly obvious conclusion, I'd like to take a few moments to talk about ants. I know you will all do your duty. Now I started writing this review, or the script for this review, directly after watching both films back to back. It had been a while since I'd seen both. I started with ants, and you know, it's a lot better than I remember. I actually found myself getting way more sucked into it than I did when I was a kid. And I think I know why. Try a little experiment the next time you happen to catch this film on television. Replace all the ants with people and set it in some futuristic society where people have no freedom. It becomes a whole different movie. Honestly, for a kid's film, there's some pretty heavy shit here. There's a pretty gruesome depiction of a war, a poignant, or at least moderately poignant depiction of a revolution. A villain with a genuinely disturbing mind who is planning for a new world order featuring only the elite and is doing it because he thinks it's the right thing for the colony. Someone gets beheaded, someone gets crushed, a lot of people get killed. Holy crap, this film can get seriously dark. And honestly, as an adult, I kind of like that. I actually really enjoyed the story, at least those bits that were a little more adult. I always kind of found it a little boring when I was a kid, but now I appreciate it a lot more. So if that's true, if the story is actually pretty good, then what's the problem? Well, the problem is this is a kid's movie, and where it falls apart is when it tries way too hard to be one. It certainly doesn't help that every character in this film, except for maybe Christopher Walken and, is either horribly forgettable or incredibly annoying. Our main characters manage to be both at the same time. Z is so irritating. All he does is complain. He's like a whiny, nasally Jewish stereotype. And the princess's only defining quality is that she kind of doesn't want to marry the psycho villain, and she's a bit bossy. And therefore, whenever they force the romance between them on us, kind of want to puke. 
Also, this is fucking Aladdin. I'm not kidding. The princess meets the lowly worker when she goes into a bar in disguise. They dance. He pretends to be something he's not to get her attention. Eventually has to rescue her before she marries the bad guy. Forget a bug's life, Disney. Call DreamWorks out on ripping off that movie. Really, why do we even need this love story? Why do we need any of these generic kitty film cliches? If you wanted to tell a story about oppression and revolutionaries, why didn't you just do it? Because honestly, DreamWorks, you have to realize how jarring it gets when you try to add in the light comic fun. Am I hurt bad? No, Seriously? Not at all. You're Am I supposed to laugh here? This is no, horrifying. Well, up your cheeks. No. Just saw millions of people slaughtered. What a dick. Oh, right. This is why this film is considered to be so much better by most people. The reason A Bug's Life works so much better than Ants, or at least one of the reasons, is that it knows exactly what it is. It's consistent. It knows it wants to be mostly light and fun. Yes, there's an underlying story of oppression, and I'd be lying if I said the payoff at the end was better than the payoff at the end of Ants. Both scenes where the downtrodden band together to prevail over the oppressor are actually pretty effective. Ants are not meant to serve grasshoppers. I've seen these ants do great things. And year after year, they somehow manage to pick food for themselves and you. So, so who is the weaker species? Ants don't serve grasshoppers. It's you who need us. We're a lot stronger than you say we are. And you know it, don't you? <laughs> Well, princess. Um, Hopper, um, I, I hate to interrupt, but, uh... It is time for a new beginning. What the hell is that? I think that's the weak element, sir. Give me, give me a hand. See, you? Let go! Don't you understand? It's for the good of the colony. Well, what are you saying? We are the colony. Cutter! What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. This is for the good of the colony, sir. Okay, in the case of Ants, it's mostly that line from Christopher Walken that made it awesome, but you get my point. A Bug's Life is just a consistently better movie. We are the colony. It's more fun to watch and puts you in a better mood, because there's nothing really harsh or depressing in it. Even the sad moments don't feel out of place, and it has a consistent sense of humor and fun. Also, the characters are so much more likable and are therefore much more sympathetic. The main character comes off as a mostly optimistic klutz, which, yeah, is a fairly common character trait these days, especially with Pixar, but it's always enjoyable, and the princess is actually given, like, a personality. She's a slightly neurotic warrior because she's freaked out about having to take over as queen. She makes mistakes, and her feelings of insecurity seem to go hand in hand with flicks, allowing for some real development between them. Now, it's true, I think they tried to do this with Z and Bala as well, but it just didn't come off as genuine. And maybe it's partially because Bala really did just have a standard princess personality. Or rather, ironically, the Disney princess personality. It feels generic and dull. Pixar's characters just stand out better. They're fun, they're quirky, flawed, a total joy to watch. And because we like these characters, the relationships are far more enjoyable and far more believable. So do I think Ants is a bad movie? No, but I think it could have been a lot better if Katzenberg hadn't been so obsessed with screwing over the Disney company. Take out the kitty crab, take out the romance, and make it more for adults. As it is, it comes off as kind of mean-spirited, and compared to A Bug's Life, it really is a very subpar children's film. 
so that it doesn't even matter that it was released a month prior. It's always going to be seen as a rip-off in the inferior movie. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Real vs. Real. Well, I'm sure that Disney and DreamWorks will wind up on here again if I decide to continue it. Next time I'll try to be a little less predictable. I'm the Animated Heroine. Thanks for watching.